Facial tattooing is an important cultural tradition of the Atayo Aboriginal people. According to the Atayo people's customary law, boys must earn their facial tattoos by headhunting. Girls also have to earn tattoos as they come of age by proving their skills in weaving and farming. With the passage of time, the unique custom of facial tattooing has died out. Today, there are only two Atayo women left in Taiwan who were tattooed in the traditional way. FDV played a visit to these living national treasures who are in their 90s. Let's take a deeper look in tonight's Sunday special report. Hailing from the Tsioli group of the Atayo Aboriginal people, 95-year-old Lawa Toyu is one of Taiwan's only two keepers of a treasured cultural tradition. Grandmother Lawa was born in 1923. Her grandfather was a tribal leader who said to her father, Your daughter must abide by the Atayo common law, which calls for boys and girls to have facial tattoos. The north-central reaches of the Central Mountain Range are the ancestral home of the Panatayal group, which includes the Atayal, Cedic, and Trugu people, who have all practiced the traditional rite of facial tattooing. Gaga is the common law of the Atayal people, and according to the Atayal Gaga, facial tattoos are rich with meaning. They put strong emphasis on the fact that facial tattooing is connected to the Gaga in accordance with the Gaga. Notably, this is recorded in written history. Men would earn their tattoos by headhunting, and women would earn it by being very good at weaving. Traditionally, the Atayal were tattooed at two stages of life. At age five or six, an Atayal child would be tattooed on the forehead. At age 15 or 16, a boy would be tattooed on the chin, and a girl would be tattooed across the cheeks. <laughs> Look at these facial tattoos, particularly the tattoos on the girls. There are many crisscrossing rhombus patterns. These are the eyes of the ancestors. The ancestors are always watching you from afar, keeping you from falling afoul. Not only are Tylo facial tattoos a marker of ability and maturity, they also represent a promise to meet with one's ancestors in the afterlife. When a tattooed person passes away, he can cross the Rainbow Bridge, which is also called the Bridge of the Ancestors. Upon death, once you step upon that bridge, you will be inspected for a facial tattoo. If you have one, you can cross the bridge and reach the world of your ancestors. Many people who have encountered this unique cultural feature have been unable to understand it. The Han people had misconstrued the facial tattoos as the scars of a terrible punishment, during the Japanese colonial period, Japan banned facial tattooing, which they saw as a sign of savagery. Take my cohort of children, for instance. The Japanese said we needed to go to school. We also heard that they would confiscate facial tattooing tools and ban facial tattoos. We children would no longer be allowed to have tattoos. So tattoo artists were asked to hurry and give us tattoos. The work was done in a rush, so our tattoos were not very conspicuous. None of us children were able to go to school. From 1913, the Japanese colonial government in Taiwan banned facial tattoos. Having their facial tattoos forcibly removed is a common memory of many Aboriginal elders. We went to school. If any student had a facial tattoo, the Japanese would cut it off. Hailing from Hualien Zhuoxi Township, Lin Zimei of the Cedic tribe is the other remaining person in Taiwan who's connected to the ancient practice. She was given her first facial tattoo at four years old, and it was forcibly removed at 15. During the Japanese colonial era, this marker of glory was brutally excised, and upon the arrival of the KMT government, the facial tattoo became the subject of discrimination. Outsiders, particularly the Han Chinese, did not understand what the tattoos on our faces represented. Many outsiders said it was the mark of the devil. Over the years, the proud ranks of the tattooed people have thinned, and this Atayal cultural practice has all but disappeared. Come on, he got
E.G. of the Truku tribe, after a long period of rumination and with the consent of his people, decided to have his face tattooed in an act of homage to his heritage. I was worried that the tribe would not agree. I attach great importance to the matter of facial tattooing. If you get a tattoo and it's not recognized by the tribe, your position in the tribe will become untenable. Upon receiving my facial tattoo, I had a deep appreciation of the fact that my ancestors are watching me. Since I was a child, I've been an honest person. I do not do things that betray my conscience. Actually, facial tattoos mean different things to different tribes. For the Italian people, it's a cultural symbol that no longer seems to be common practice. Instead, what we should focus on is the spirit of Gaga in the present day. How to recreate it, how to rebuild attention to it so that the Gaga can help us face and resolve present day conflicts. Very recently, contemporary facial tattoos have begun to reappear on the faces of the tribe's young people. It's not enough to restore the cultural practice, but it's a gesture of respect for one's ancestors that, in a small way, keeps alive the spirit of what the facial tattoo meant to capture.